So let me share with you at least five lessons, and if we have time, we'll add three more lessons, okay? And maybe if we have time, a, a Q&A as well. But the number one lesson that I will share is um, value comes first and money comes after. And so, you know, my mentor has always told me, always show up with a gift. It doesn't have to be a physical gift. It just has to be something valuable that somebody might appreciate. And so I think that's effectively uh, when we look at startups, they come to us with the same angle. So for uh, Moracot, which is a, a fintech for um, managing core banking system, you know, they came to us with pretty much a brilliant product an intimate knowledge of how the banking world is, looks at their core banking system. But they came to us looking for new clients, new ways in which they could expand beyond just Cambodia. So as a former, you know, a bunch of former bankers, we were able to deliver that, you know, start the conversation with them on the first place in the first day. Uh, Junet, <laughs> again, she's right here. Uh, Junet came to us with a unique insight that Social selling was going to take a place in the Cambodian e-commerce market. Um, but they need a, a, a technology infrastructure, they need um, corporate clients, they need more operations help. So with Smart's help, having access to 8 million subscribers, um, some of the best API technologies, and you know, just the name brand recognition, we're able to you know, help them get started. And so, you know, money is a commodity in a sense. Uh, value and what we could bring to the startups was exactly why most people would come to us. And it reminds me of uh, a recent meeting I had with a pretty good startup here. They have a pretty solid financial um, uh, P&L, profitable. And at the end of the meeting, I'm like, why are you looking for funding, dude? I mean, you're, you're pretty solid. And he said, you know, if I'm, if I'm looking for funding, I could just sell my car. I could just sell my land, you know. Look, they low is the, the Cambodian version of that phrase. But he said, what can you do for me? So the, the number one les lesson I learned was we have to show up with a gift. Whatever value we could bring to the startups, we have to be upfront about that, okay? Uh, number two lesson is um, lean in with expertise. Um, so when we started, we met about 50 different companies. Um, all in, in various verticals. We have fintech, we have payments, we have healthcare, we have Uber derivations thereof. Uh, we have all sorts of stuff. And so, it works. And so it was impossible for us to know any vertical intimately. Uh, it would be impossible for us to um, assess those businesses or even add value. So. The number one lesson we learned was, next slide. The number one lesson we learned was we had to reach out there, reach out to other people within our ecosystem. We had to reach out to people who knows how Uber works. You know, how can we can compete against Uber, for example? Um, so, you know, that's probably the same lesson as any startup here today is that, you know, oftentimes the market moves so fast that you're not, you're not gonna know everything. And you're not going to read anything that's out there online necessarily that will tell you these insights. So you have to, you know, find your way to get to the people that have been in these businesses before. So this is a quote from a, 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 one of my favorite books, uh, Anna Karenina. It says, happy families are all alike. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own ways. So sort of applies to startup as well. Every startup has its own unique set of issues. Um, recruiting a CTO, very hard. Recruiting the right drivers, very hard. Um, finding the first set of clients, very hard. And so for us, you know, how can we add value when the, the, the set of challenges are so insurmountable? Well, that question led us to essentially three insights. Um, number one was that we can't solve everything. As investors, as startups, we can't solve everything. So best to focus on 20% of the problems that you know, 
is able to solve 80% of the real issues that you have to deal with. That's number one. Number two is that for us as the investor, we really need to come in and, you know, if a startup team needs some accounting help, we'll have to go in there for a day. If, um, you know, a startup needs some pitching advice, we just have to do it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's sort of one of those things where, again, going back to the first point, value comes first. And the third insight was that, you know, it's rare, but oftentimes we see things that just, we just can't help. And, and, and in those cases, we shouldn't be the investor in those startups at all. Right? Number four, please. Founder friendly. This, this, is, this takes me a while because um, early stage startup and investing in them, it's quite different from later stage um, investing. Uh, and one of the things that we learned was that structuring is always about mitigating risk. You know, it's always about coming up with a set of manuals for why we should f avoid having, you know, all these different scenarios. You know, so what that means is that at the end of the day, you'll come up with a 200 page shareholders agreement, which if you're gonna do that for every startup, you might as well not be in tech in the first place. You might, you're gonna be so far left behind. And so we adopted a, f a philosophy that we gotta be friendly to founders. We gotta make sure that they have enough flexibility to take the risk and, and we shouldn't be in the way of, of how they operate their business. Because ultimately the biggest thing that we do is we make a bet on the team. And there's no you know, crazy complicated structure that will prevent you from failing uh, if you get the wrong team in the first place. So, founder friendly. Love is better than likes, and I stole this uh, explicitly from Y Combinator, but it, it really applies to a market like Cambodia. So, when we were learning about uh, Chunak, they were not necessarily the biggest uh, delivery platform out there. But when we talked to their uh, customers, those people were really, really, really happy with Junac. They love what Junac was able to, to, to give them. And so we were pretty impressed by that, um, partially because their customer acquisition cost was probably not gonna be too high if that's the kind of viral coefficient that we're dealing with. With Moricot, same thing. We talked to the banks that use their product, love them, love the price, love that it's relevant to them. And so for a B2B business, um, you really need to uh, count on you know, your, your major clients in order for you to get to the next client. And so, um, you know, contrast this with a product that sort of buys traffic and then over time people sort of forget what it is about, not sure how to use it, and then all of a sudden the, the, the marketing spend is gone. So ideally you have many, many loves, uh, just like life, but it's better, it's better to have love than to have many likes, quality over quantity. So these, these other lessons, I think um, it's pretty obvious, so I'm not gonna go through them. Uh, I, I will just highlight number eight, perhaps, um, different tomorrow, in which case that, you know, hopefully the startup that is today will be completely different tomorrow. Um, meaning that if you don't evolve, you're probably gonna, you know, hope, hopefully it's not gonna happen, but you're gonna be out of business. And so, all, you know, I expect that all the startups that we um, partner with will not be the same form. And the most important thing for us to do is to make sure that they're adaptable enough and they're kind of people who learn from mistakes and things like that. Okay? So that's all the lessons that I, that I share with you today. Anyone has some question for uh, Bora here? So a quick question uh, from myself. Um, in which spaces or industries do you see a lot of opportunities in the startup scene here in uh, Cambodia for the years to come? That's a tough question, I know. And there's many uh, opportunities in many industries, but what would be your, uh, your preferences or where is your uh, love on that? 
maybe uh, I'll just uh, answer that with um, not so much verticals or sectors, but themes. Um, number one theme is platform. Um, basically, um, Cambodia, there are certain things that are not yet platforms. It could be a marketplace, it could be other things, right? Things that you normally see in the US and other places, but for some reason there's no dominant player yet. There's no you know, number one player where it's impossible for the second place to come in. That's number one. Number two has to do with um, question bucket number six. Um, so we know that there's so many global players coming into the market. Um, some of them are here tonight. And so how do Cambodian startups position themselves to, you know, either take advantage of or compete against those players? And the only thing that I could think about um, for those guys is you've got to out-hustle the players. You've got to know, you, you know, Cambodian uh, customers and businesses so much better than they do. And oftentimes, um, it, it, they could either be collaborators of those new companies coming into Cambodia or an acquisition target, which is not necessarily a bad thing, uh, not exactly a bad position to be in either. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Bora.